hide everything. All right, guys. We are back in Code Academy. They're doing a preview of one of their new courses, SQL, Analyzing Business Metrics. So this is something I know a little bit about, not necessarily with SQL, but um, being a content creator on YouTube, you get very addicted to analytics, and all analytics are are your YouTube's um, subscribers, views, what, what percentage. It's basically just a bunch of statistics regarding your channel, and the way that's done is through a database and you know giving it in a format that's a little easier to read with charts and stuff like that. So it's very important to businesses and to anybody trying to look at the numbers to see what we can do better so that's kind of what it's going to be going on here so we're starting unit one advanced aggregates advanced aggregates let's see here so this is asking us to familiarize our stuff so um let's go ahead and jump right in so it's asking us to select when we use the star that means all from our orders Orders is our database. Buy the ID and limit it to 100. Ooh, or run, rather. Select 100 rows. So you select all from orders. Oh, order by. And we're saying order it by the ID. So see how it's sorted by here cool so this is our hundred things of data not the only way we're sorting it right now is by the ID <coughs> so, uh, the order <coughs> excuse me list individual f foods so now we want to select from order items and order it by the ID and limit by so let's see what it what uh, data we end up getting from here so we're gonna select all from order underscore items database uh, or table, excuse me, order by ID and limit that to 100. Then when we run this, and of course make sure you spell order correctly, order <coughs> items, order underscore items, order by ID limit, select all from order underscore items, order by ID limit 100. Oh, and of course, take out your previous line. You can you only want to be querying it one time. Otherwise, you're going to be at least in our results here. We're going to <coughs> oh, excuse me, getting over a cold. Uh, get uh, two queries, and we only have one place to output them right here. So let's move on. So we want to use the date function to cast timestamps and ordered at to date. It's like, all right, so let's delete this first query here. And we're going to say select date ordered underscore at ordered underscore at. So select the dates ordered at from our orders uh, table and then order by one and limit, oops, limit 100. Let's run that. So you can see that it's ordering it. It's ordering the dates here. The dates they've been ordered at, excuse me. The ordered at is the date and then we're organizing it in the date function, date date pattern. So group and count orders by their dates. All right, so again, uh, at this point we're slowly beginning the hang of it. Comma, let's see, count one. From orders, order by one, group by one, order by one, group by one. And we're not going to have a limit. So let's take off this limit. And then we want to group by one. Typically, you'll be able to understand what's going on in your query after you run it. And you say, okay, so what's going on with this count? In this case, we're counting every one that the dates are ordered at on the same date. So we don't have any repeats as you see as we go down here. So in this case only one thing was ordered on the 9th. On the 11th five things were one thing on the 12th. But we don't have 090909. That's what's kind of going on here. 
All right, we can make a few changes to our daily count query to get the revenue. So now you'll see that we're kind of, oh, let's count our revenue in this period of time compared with the previous period of time. And now we can see the growth or we can see the increase and you know make decisions about your business. So that's kind of what the importance of is all this. So we got a lot of code right here. So we're going to select the date, oops, date of ordered underscore at. And then we are going to come around the sum of the amount underscore paid. I'm not sure what that two quite means quite yet. orders and then we want to join order underscore items on orders dot ID equal to orders underscore items dot order underscore ID wow this one's a long one and then group by one and order by one oops now let's see here. Sum the daily revenue. So, uh, we typed it all out. Let's just copy and paste it in there. See what happens. Um, I believe it doesn't matter if we type it all in one line. So I probably just messed up on some spelling. Okay, so this two here, when we are rounding it, means that we're rounding it to two digits. Cool. So uh, if it's a, just a zero, it's not gonna round it the whole way or 0.5, but no more than two. So add the small change to tell us how much we're making per day by in, for any single dish. What's the daily revenue taking kale smoothies? So select date, order that, around some from orders, join order item, orders ID, also orders items, group by one, order by one. Use a where clause. Oh, um, and then last but not least, we're gonna add where. So we're gonna say where. Basically, this is kind of I think of it as an if. So where if the items dot name is equal to kale smoothie, we add it. So. Moving on, uh, those numbers are pretty low. Typical day has thousand of revenue, but a small percentage of that's coming from kale smoothies. Okay, uh, before we can get to the percent of revenue of each item, we need to know total revenue of each item. So in this case, let's put this in here. So we're gonna select the name, and so we know what we're pricing, so we can see that in the same category. Then we're gonna round it to two places for the, the total sum of the amount paid. And we're going to do this from our order items table, and then we're going to group it by name and order by two descending. Let's see what that two descending is. So order by two, grilled cheese, chicken parm. So descending is greatest to less. Uh, I'm not sure what the order by two is. Let's see if it, they say in the next one. So sort the items in the second column, show the products in order of their contribution to the revenue. All right, that's what the order by two is. So in this case, select the name, then the amount, then round this, the amount to two places, except we only want to round it to one. And then we are going to select, oops, put slash there, select, sum of the amount underscore paid from order underscore items for all one hundred point out comma two and that's PCT. 
So from order item to by one order by two city. So let's take a look at this, see if I got this correct. So select name, uh, amount paid. We're gonna take off one of that. Slash select sum amount, select sum amount paid from order items. Okay, let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So cool, that worked. And now we have the percent of each product represents. So uh, the grilled cheese is 21.6%. So this is, uh, if you just think about it for a second, so sum, the sum of the amount paid from order items times 100% and to the second place. But we're dividing the, our original sum. So we're just, this is just basically the divide by the total amount. So that's, that's kind of what's going on here. Um, it just looks a little more complicated when you write it all out as a SQL query. All right. So we'll build our own categories using a case statement. We can list out each product and decide its group out of category column to the. Okay, so I'm just gonna, there's a lot here. So I'm just gonna control C it in here and try and explain it. So it's saying select all and for the case using a case statement. So this is how we can set up the switching of values or setting up of values. So case name, when it's kale smoothie, then add the smoothie category. When it's orange juice, add it to the drink category. When it's soda, uh, drink, uh, BLT, sandwich, and then you know chicken parm dinner. Else, just put other. And then uh, do this from our order items table, and then order it by the ID. So it's gonna be ordered by ID, and then you can see it goes through here and the automatic setting up of our new category area. Or if category was already in there. Um, oh, and as category. So this is where we establish that it goes in a category column. Pretty cool. Uh, now then use the name generated category column in a previous revenue group to group by. So in this category. And then we want to oops, excuse me, round 1.0 times the sum of the amount which we're paid uh, times 100 to the second decimal. And then we want to have that as a percent. So when we run this, you'll see that now it has the total percent here, but we didn't finish it. So. We're only getting one ID. Everything's gonna mess up here. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, so um, SPCT from ordered items, uh, ordered by to descending. Get rid of this. Group by one. So we run it. Oops, I may have crashed it. From orders. Oops, I did this on endless category. I should not have done that. I forgot a, a part of what it was that we were trying to do here. So I'm gonna ref ref refresh this page. Oops. So I think I may have just crashed the page. Let's go ahead and just refresh it. Hope that we didn't break it. So we have sufficiently broken our, our first column here. So we're just gonna we gotta run, we run this first page. This first input real quick. We need to reset. And we're gonna copy and paste this in and explain what's going on. So I don't break this item. So, and that's category. So we're ending it with the category, right? And then we're, so we add all this with the two category, and then we have round 1.0 times the sum of the amount paid, so the total sum, and then divide it by the sum of everything from order items times 100, and display it as a, as a PCT, the, the percent uh, caption, and then order it by two in a second. So this is kind of what's going on here. Is it's just again, it looks really complicated. It's just a lot of syntax that we're gonna have to learn. 
but it's it's very intuitive the more you do it. I've been working with uh, my SQL databases and course work of mine. And eventually, if you just repeat these lines, select all from the table, it can become very intuitive and very, very important. So, in this case, we're going to select the name, select the name column. This is the total orders with so the distinct order ID is the ID number they have, and they're counting how many things have this exact ID number. And this is the total. So there's like uh, 669 cakes, and the way we're getting that is just by sorting through them. So now we want to know the number of people who make these orders. So let's do this. Select the name. This is when you put it as as we're giving the column name reorder rate and we're selecting that data from order items and joining order items uh, order underscore items dot order ID and this is the reorder rate cool so a lot of stuff going on in this first introductory course but if I had to break it down what you need to know this is the bare minimum you need to know select all from table and then that is the bare minimum all right what's next next we want to get that this basic statement from from our we want to get this this is step one what's step two where column is world or something whatever the name of the column is you, you just keep on expanding and then divide by it and then how do I divide by sentence? And eventually one leads the other and you'll just continue getting uh, better. And eventually you'll be typing out crazy little things like this once in a while. So hope you guys found this little walkthrough helpful. I really love that they're doing SQL sort of related courses because there's not a lot of great resources out there to practice your SQL and database skills. And it's a great thing to have on it. So I'll see you guys next time.